Hi everyone, as I promised, today I'm going to talk about on-farm tests for water in poultry operation. So actually there are few tests you can just run on your farm. They are pretty cheap and you need some tools to run these tests. So what you need is just to take a water sample from your water source, from beginning of the drinker line, end of the drinker line, from water tank, and then we are going to test it. The first test that we are going to do is pH test and ORP test. ORP stands for oxidation reduction potential. And in fact, is the in plain language, ORP is the power of water to kill the bacteria. In fact, ORP shows the oxidation potential of the water. And if you have high readings for ORP, it means that if your ORP is above 650 millivolt, it shows that your water has a good potential to disinfect the uh, water and to kill the bacteria and the germs. So if you got an ORP around, let's say, 700 or 750 millivolt, it's the best uh, ORP you can get. But if your ORP is low, let's say if it is around 200 or 250 millivolt, in that case, it shows that your water does not have the power to kill the bacteria. It means that your water has high organic loads or high levels of minerals. For example, iron, manganese. It means that you need to treat your water to get off those uh, minerals. And the best practice is to use a, a softener tank to get rid of the uh, water hardness in your water. So now we are going to test the water pH and water ORP. So what I'm going to do, I just take the cap off and here there are some electrodes to read the water pH and water ORP. So I'm just going to turn on the device and on the LCD you can see the reading for pH and ORP. So what we are going to do is to just uh, dip the electrodes in the water and stir it a little bit and then we will need to wait until these readings are stabilized and then we can read the water ORP and water pH. If you are going to measure your water pH uh, in your poultry operation the best level is between 5.5 to 7 and it means that if your water pH falls between 5.5 and 7 uh, you're gonna have a successful sanitation program. Sanitation program depends on your water pH. If your water pH is beyond this that range in that case, you need to treat your water first, bring the pH to the standard level, and then you can treat, you can sanitize your water. Or sometimes when you are going to choose the right disinfectant for your water system, again, you need to know your water pH. Let's say if your water pH is less than seven, in that case, you can use chlorine-based products, for example, like uh, bleach. Or if your water pH is above seven, 
In that case, chlorine-based products will not work. And you will need to use uh, hydrogen peroxide products. Overall, we do have three different, different uh, sanitizing products, chlorine-based, chlorine dioxide, and hydrogen peroxide. And to choose the best sanitizer, we need to know the water pH. And I'll be talking about sanitation programs in the next video. So, similar to this device, we do have another device for measuring the electrical conductivity of water. We call it EC or electrical conductivity. If you have a high level of EC, it means that your water has high levels of ionized minerals. And in that case, again, you need to treat your water and get, off, get rid of those minerals. For example, by reverse osmosis or uh, water softener tanks. So the idea is, uh, in fact, to have a good measurement, right? So because of that, you need to make sure that your device is calibrated before taking any measurements. So for example, for the EC, if you are going to measure your uh, water EC, the best level is less than 4.69 decimals per uh, meter, or you can uh, call it uh, millisiemens per centimeter. And by having the water EC, you can calculate water TDS as well, or total dissolved solids. And the unit for TDS will be based on milligram per liter. So in fact, if you have your water EC and your water EC, if it is less than five, in that case, if you multiply your water EC by 640, it's gonna give you the water TDS. But if your water EC is above five decimals per meter. In that case, you need to multiply your water EC by 800 to get the water TDS or total dissolved solids. So as I mentioned, it's really important to calibrate the device before using it. Every time we are going to use a device to measure water pH, water ORP, or EC, we need to calibrate and make sure that it, it's showing us the uh, accurate numbers. So in measurements, in every measurements, we do have two measures. So measure of uh, accuracy and measure of precision. Accuracy means how close is your reading to the true number? For example, if your water pH is, let's say, 7, and you are getting a number here, and it shows 6.9, so you are pretty close to the true number. So you are pretty accurate. But precision shows us how close are our different measurements together. Let's say, I'm going to measure the water pH five times to make sure that I'm getting the you know right value, right readings. In that case, how close are those five readings together? It is, it shows the precision of my measurement. And never ever based your decisions. Uh, you know, based on a single measurement, because you need to measure uh, pH or ORP or EC or whatever index 
several times and make sure that you have good uh, repeats on your measurements. And then you can decide, you know, which uh, sanitation program you are going to choose for water treatment. So the other uh, tool that you can use to measure the water uh, attributes is water strips. So here, as you can see, there are different spots. I can see here five spots with different colors. And each spot is going to measure one attribute. For example, for this kit that I have here, it's going to measure total bromine, free chlorine. Free chlorine is uh, important for us in poultry barns. If you're going to have a good sanitation program, the free chlorine level should be between three to five parts per million or ppm. So if at the end of the drinker line, you got three to five ppm free chlorine, it shows that you have a good sanitation program in place. So the other attribute is total alkalinity, pH, and total hardness. So to measure this, here you have for each attribute, you have different colors, a set of colors for each uh, attribute. What we're going to do is we're going to dip the strip in the water and take it. And without shaking it, you need to put it uh, level for about 15 seconds. After 15 seconds, you're going to compare each spot's color to the relevant uh, colors here, to the relevant attributes colors here on the uh, container. And then you can see, you can have, you know, a general idea on your water attributes, like your water pH or water alkalinity, water uh, hardness, but it's just for, uh, let's say, it shows the quality. But if you want to quantify it, let's say for pH, if you want to measure exactly your water pH, then you need to use pH meter to see exactly what pH value you have in your water. But if you just need to, you know, have a general idea about your water pH, water free chlorine, etc., then you can use these strips. So then, for example, if you see here, uh, the second one is uh, red and it shows the water pH. If I compare it here with my uh, standard, it shows that the water pH is around eight. So if you are running a poultry operations, you know, by this water, then you will need to choose the right, the right uh, sanitizer for your water. So sometimes we can't rely on our tools. Even if you are using, you know, a scale to measure body weight, you cannot really rely on the accuracy of your uh, scale. You need to have other scales as well in the place to compare those readings. And then you will have, you know, confident that you've got the right measurements. So... Now, let's say I, I tested my water by using this strip. But if I want to make sure that this strip works well, I can do a little bit test, right? For example, 
I can do a little bit test on free coloring. So here, for example, the second color from here, from my left, so is this one, it shows the free chlorine. If I put it here, it shows that my water here actually has just a little bit free chlorine, right? So, but I wanna test my strip to see if it works well or not. So I can't use this strip for the second time, but I can use, you know, other strip to test it. So in order to increase the water free chlorine, I can just add a little bit bleach into my water. And, you know, it's a, it's available uh, product. You can just put a little bit uh, bleach to increase the free chlorine level in your water. Then you can just test, you know, your strip. Now, if it works correctly, the second spot from my left should have different color. It means that the color should be darker and towards uh, purple, which means that my water chlorine level is high. So it is the water that I put bleach in it. I dip the I dip the uh, strip and I I should wait about 15 seconds to see what would happen. But even before waiting, you know, for 15 seconds, if you look at the second spot from my left, you can see a dark purple color over here. And if I compare it to the standard of my uh, free chlorine, it shows that the free chlorine level is more than 10 ppm. So it shows that my strip works. But let's say in my previous strip that I have put here, if you look at the second color second spot from the left you can see it's really pale yellow it means that my original water had just a little bit free chlorine so you can use this strip to test the chlorine or you wanna test the you know uh, efficacy of your or accuracy of your um, strip to test the water pH. In that case, you know, it's my water sample. I can just add a little bit citric acid. Citric acid, you know, we are using this citric acid to get rid of uh, water scales, uh, build up scales in our uh, water distiller. So, and I'm just gonna add a little bit acid citric in my water sample. And then I can measure the uh, pH. I mean, not, not really measuring, just to have a big picture about, you know, water pH. I just dipped in inside the uh, glass. So the pH, should be the second one from my right hand side. So here I needed to, you know, a little bit um, steer the citric acid here. But if I look at the at the second spot from my right, it's pretty yellow color. And if I compare it with here, it shows low pH. It means that when I put acid citric, um, it lowered the water pH and it works very well. But if I compare it with my 
first strip, which is here, the top one. And if you look at the second spot from my right, it's pretty red, reddish purple, right? So this spot is purple, but the bottom one is yellow. It shows that uh, my first water had a higher pH based on this higher than eight, but the lower one, the lower strip, uh, which I put acid citric in my water, the pH is low. That's why the color is uh, yellow. So by that, I tested my water strips. And you don't have to do this, but in fact, if you do that, for every measurements that you are going to have on your farm, when you are measuring body weight, when you are measuring, you know, ventilation attributes, water system attributes, whatever, if you have confident that your measurements are accurate and precise, then you can make the best decisions. So I think I covered, uh, you know, enough materials for on-farm water tests, and I hope you can get benefit out of it. So please feel free, as always, to subscribe to my channel and share these videos with your peers who are interested in poultry science. And by that, I will see you in the next episode.